Welcome to the Ferndale City Council meeting for Monday, August 27th, 2018. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance as you're able. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Uh, Barb, would you call the roll, please? Yes. Council members Leakes May. Here. Martin. Here. Piana. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Pollica. Mayor Coulter. Here. Thank you. We have a quorum this evening. Uh, next item of business would be the Your Honor, before oh. we do that, I'd like to move that we excuse Mayor Pro Tem Pollica's absence. I support. Uh, all right. All in favor say aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Thanks for doing that. Um, next item of business is the approval of the agenda. I move we approve the agenda as presented. Support. Uh, moved by Martin and supported by Leakes May. Any discussion on the agenda? All right, Barb, would you call the roll? Yes. Council members Martin? Yes. Piana? Yes. Leakes May? Yes. Mayor Coulter? Yes, thank you. The agenda is adopted. And so the next item on the agenda are presentations, and we have three presentations this evening. Uh, the first one is always a fun one, a presentation of the police awards and a sergeant's promotion. And so Chief Palazzolo is here to introduce that presentation. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and Council. Good evening, Chief. Uh, if I could have Officer Szymanski, Bodendorfer, and to Toizen come on forward, please. It's unfortunate that we have to keep giving these uh, awards, but this is a lifesaver award for a Narcan save. Um, so on May 27th, 2018, approximately 3.30 in the morning, Ferndale Cars responded to a residence on West Maplehurst Avenue for an overdose investigation. Officers Bodendorf arrived on scene and located a young man face down on the bed. The man was pale with agonal breathing. Officer Bodendorf rolled the young man onto his back and administered the first do uh, dose of Narcan. Officer Toysen then had to administer a second dose of Narcan with minimal results. Officer Szymanski then provided a third dose of Narcan. After approximately five minutes, the man became responsive and walked out to the Ferndale Ambulance. The man was transported to the hospital for further evaluation. The essential medical treatment provided by these three officers was directly responsible uh, for saving this uh, young man's life. Yeah. So we are awarding them the Lifesaver Award. Uh, the next award is for uh, Officer Blanchard, if you could come forward, please. Ah, the baby doll. Baby doll. <laughs> Where have I seen this face yeah. late, lately? Uh huh. <laughs> I got to say, this is one of the most unique situations and videos that I have ever seen in my life, and it was probably the most memorable. Not because of what I actually saw, like visually, but the, uh, <laughs> but the poise and the confidence that Officer Blanchard demonstrated during this very, very uh, stressful situation and something that we don't typically train for. Uh, so on August 11th at approximately 8 a.m., Officer Blanchard and Officer Batons were assisting Officer Fields on a traffic stop in the area of 8 Mile in Livernois. A uh, driver frantically pulled up and parked alongside them asking directions for the closest hospital. The front seat passenger was screaming in pain and clearly in labor with her fourth child. Officer Blanchard began to give directions to the closest hospital when he realized they weren't going to make it. <laughs> Officer Blanchard saw the child crowning and began to assist with the delivery um, in the front seat of the vehicle prior to rescue uh, arriving on scene. Officer Blanchard went above and beyond the call of duty, stepping up to deliver a healthy baby girl. Uh, his quick actions and decisive actions uh, in this, uh, and both mother and child are doing well, uh, rescue arrived and transported them to the hospital. What was even more uh, 
amazing about this video is that after he, deli after he delivered this baby, he took off his outer vest carrier, used that as a barrier. Uh, after he took that off, got the baby, gave it to mom, he took his rubber glove off and reached off and goes, congratulations, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> and as he was reaching over, he noticed that there's three kids in the back seat going. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, quite a day, huh? <laughs> so it was, it was a, a truly amazing video that I can't show you, but just believe me when I tell you that. <laughs> it was pretty cool. Yeah, I bet. So for, also a perfect follow-up um, for the promotion of Officer Blanchard as well. Uh, he started with us in May 2000 as a service aide. He worked four years, and then January of 2004, he started as a police officer. Oddly enough, he was hired only part-time because I was being deployed, and he was taking my spot, knowing that if there was a spot available, he would, he would have been laid off, so it's kind of fitting. Uh, so he spent four years as a narcotics officer. He was involved in SWAT, uh, and he's also one of our FTOs. Um, getting promoted today is a major accomplishment. The process is long, is stressful, and is a huge sacrifice, not only for you, uh, but for your family. I want to thank Scott uh, for making that commitment. Uh, a sergeant is on the front line of decision making, and they do it 24-7. I always like to give a few words of advice. Uh, never let the public down. Never violate the public trust. Remember, you are a police officer first and a sergeant second. Remember, the chief may have officially promoted you, but the respect and confidence of your troops are earned and not issued. Remember where you came from and always be humble. Never let your ego take charge of your actions. Leaders are respected not for their position, but by their actions. Never expect somebody to do something that you wouldn't do yourself. Always remember your family uh, and stay grounded. It also helps to keep a sense of humor. Uh, standing here today, you're the same exact person you were yesterday. You haven't gotten any smarter. <laughs> you haven't gotten any wiser. And you haven't gotten any better looking. <laughs> uh, this new position doesn't come with a manual. There will come a time that you have to uh, counsel somebody that you were peers with a month ago. There will come a time that somebody in the community asks you for a favor that you know you can't give them. There will come a time that you have to do something that you do not want to do. What I'm asking you to do is always do the right thing. This may sound like a simple request. Managers know how to do things right. Leaders always do the right thing. Be a leader that I know you can be. Uh, tension orders. The city of Ferndale, state of Michigan, United States of America has placed special trust and confidence in the patriotism, integrity, and ability of Officer Scott Blanchard. In view of these special qualities and his demonstrated potential to serve in the higher grade, Officer Scott Blanchard is promoted to the permanent rank of sergeant, effective date August 27, 2008 by order of the Chief of Police for the Fernell Police Department. His father, Jack, was a Berkeley City Councilman and, reti and retired Colonel in the United States Army, is gonna do the honor of pigeon pinning his badge on. get to work. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Sergeant. And thank you to all the men and women in blue who came out and, and uh, supported their fellow officers. Great to see you all. I feel safer already. All right. Our next presentation this evening is the Ferndale Beautification Awards. Good evening. Good evening. I am Dustin Hagfors. I'm here on behalf of the Beautification Commission, and we are going to give out our August Beautification Awards. 
And as you all know, our beautification awards, we usually give out four um, resident awards and one commercial award. Um, the resident awards are separated by um, districts within Ferndale around Nine Mile and Woodward. So for our southeast winner, there we go. For our southeast winner, we have 331 Silman, who's owned by Peter McMillan. Is Peter here today? Nope. Okay, no worries. We're going to say a couple of things about it. So it was built in 1924. It is a four-bedroom, one-and-a-half bath house. The reason why we chose this house for our southeast winner was that it has a great variety of plant material in the front, as well as the bed area around the tree is very nicely done, giving it a different level on the lawn and overall improving the curb appeal of this home. Mm -hmm. For our southwest winner, we have 1615 Bowfield, who is owned by Kate Baker. Is Kate here? Okay. She's not here. So this home was built in 1919. It's a two-bedroom, one-bath home. Kay and her husband have done a wonderful job creating a lovely bed in front of the house with a wide variety of plants. Um, it has a mix of grasses, peonies, hydrangea, and other perennials that really make this a show-stopping home on not a very heavily trafficked street. So if you don't drive on Bowfield often, you should definitely drive by this home because it's a great representation of Ferndale. For our northeast winter, we have 1903 Woodward Heights, and that's owned by um, Alan Hale and Emily Obert. Obert? Oh, yeah. Come on up. So this house was built in 1950. It's a two-bed, one-bath home. And what we really liked about this is this is kind of the iconic way of doing a natural front yard. It's so well done. It's natural landscape, mass plantings, zero lawn yard. And it's just been so nicely done. This is definitely one of the nicest homes in Northeast Ferndale. So congratulations, you guys. You've done great work. Are those day? What uh, what are the yellow ones? Uh, orange cone flowers. Orange cone flowers. Wow. Ooh, well, cone flower candidate too, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I try to find that every day. That picture does not do it justice. Uh, you gotta drive by You must. Do you fertilize it to get them that nice, or why? That is. Uh, no. Wow. <laughs> it's really sustainable. <laughs> Very nice. Wow. And finally, we have our northwest winner. And our Northwest winner is 437 West Drayden, owned by, owned by Lawrence Shepron. Is Lawrence here? No, but Laura is. Laura, please come up then. <laughs> and this, I, own it. I own it too. You own it? <laughs> well, Laura, this is also for you then. It was built in 1926. It's a three-bedroom, three-bath home. We really liked it because it has some great plantings out front, very well manicured, and just has amazing curb appeal. Yeah. So great work. Woo. Thank you. My neighbors have great homes and I, I'm not a, I was never a huge gardener I like to garden it's my therapy but my neighbors beautiful homes really made me step up my game <laughs> <laughs> and also, like peer pressure credit to the um, Ferndale Pleasant Ridge um, gardeners Facebook page yeah. they are so kind and so helpful with advice and free plants I I've never lived any place yeah. with such kind and wonderful people thank you thank you I'm a member myself. It's a great group if, you, if you're into gardening. And then as I said, we not only have four residents that win each month, but we also have a commercial business that wins as well. The commercial business that we chose was 800 Hilton. And the reason why we chose them was because they did have a fire a few, I think it's been a few years ago, and they really have brought that building back to life. They've had very nice awnings, really up the curb appeal, and they've already start, started adding plantings even before the building is finished. So we do really appreciate them, and that's for Meridian Investments. I don't believe they're here either, but um, we really appreciate the work they've done and look forward to more work they do in the future. Excellent. So just a friendly reminder, we do have more nominations coming up. We are done with our beautification awards, but every September we do our big block beautification awards. So if you see a street in Ferndale that you really think is a great representation of the city, uh, please nominate it. Um, in October, we do our Buddhification Awards, so that's Halloween decorations, always a fun treat. And December is our holiday lights, so any holiday, decorate, make Ferndale look fabulous. And be sure to follow us on Facebook and on Instagram for great tips and all the happenings going on.
Thank you. Excellent. Thank you, Dustin, and thank you to everyone on the Beautification Committee. I always enjoy that. Uh, and our final presentation tonight, I think Commissioner Zach has a words to hand out as well. Is that right? No, I'm just kidding. I wish. <laughs> Tough acts to follow. All I have is Oakland County updates. But I um, do want to tell you about a, a lot of wonderful resources coming out of Oakland County. want to remind people that we do have a discount health program. It's called Live Healthy Oakland. It's not insurance, but there's a prescription discount card. There's a dental discount card and other health discount cards. And to access the materials, we don't have hard copies yet. The easiest way would be to go to the oakgov.com, go under Board of Commissioners, look me up, Helene Zach, there's a link to it. It's faster than really going into the health department. And there are materials being distributed when they're ready to our senior centers and, and throughout the county. Um, also want to tell you about some other programs. We now have an Oakland County Veteran Nav Navigator. And this is offered through our Oakland County Health Network. And his name is Chaka McDonald. 248-764-4443, and he's grant funded through what was called the Community Me Mental Health Network, and he's there to help veterans, sport groups, housing, mental health, employment, and I, I think it's a wonderful new resource. I had the opportunity to meet him last week at our commission meeting. Th through that program, they are offering some additional veterans and military programs. There's going to be on October 6th, 11 to 3 p.m. at Catalpa Oaks Park. There will be family enrich enrichment. Red Cross is going to be there. Uh, activities for children, free food. It's veterans get together. Um, I know that there were elections problems, and we're not taking them lightly. We have created the Board of Commissioners a bipartisan study group to look at what happened on election night. And we welcome, there's going to be a couple of different meetings. But more importantly, right now, if you go into the Oakland County website, under the clerk, there is a voter incident report form. And we want to hear from individual residents. If you had a problem voting, we'd love you to fill that out so this bipartisan committee can study what happened, understand, more importantly, run the best voting experience out there. Um, on September 5th, there's a senior day at the zoo where it's free entry from 10 to 3. And I do encourage all of our seniors to use that. And finally, we've had an, a human trafficking study group. And they continue to do education. But we do now have a human trafficking hotline. Um, and you can either call 888-373-7888. Or you can text at be free. Uh, helper info, and there are informational materials under the Board of Commissioners website. Again, OakGov going under Board of Commissioners. We do have a tremendous problem of hum human trafficking in our county. There are many young people being approached, and this is a proactive response. I'm excited about the texting and web and hotline. That's newer. Any questions? Congratulations. I don't think we've seen you since the primary election, so congratulations on Thank that. Thank you. I know you have a, you're on the ballot again in November. Are you unopposed then, or do you have a... I have a Republican. Have a Repo there was opponent. actually a Republican primary, too. Yeah, so. so we'll save the final congratulations yeah. till November. Thank you so Good much. Good to see you. Thank you. All right, uh, that concludes our presentations. Next item of business would be called the audience, which would be your opportunity if you're here with us in, 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 pub, in person. Uh, to address council on any issue that you would like that's not on the agenda because we'll give you an opportunity to speak to those items when we get to that part of the agenda.
Uh, but if you'd like to come on up and uh, present to council, you get three minutes uh, to say anything you would like. Give us your name, if you don't mind, although, Jim, we know you. Yeah. <laughs> yes, good evening. Uh, I'm Jim O'Donnell. I serve on the Ferndale Public Schools Board of Education. Um, just uh, three things uh, that I wanted to mention. Um, first, uh, we welcomed our teachers back uh, today and did a full day, the first of two full days at the high school doing professional development for all the teachers on a variety of subjects. And I want to thank uh, Chief Palazzolo and the police department for coming out and doing uh, safety training for uh, all of our staff with the with the uh, Jacobs kits. And so thank you once again to uh, the city of Ferndale and the police department for not only doing the training and providing the kits, but for all they do to help the school administration coordinate safety in all of our schools. That's just part of a comprehensive approach to, to student safe, safety that we have. Uh, the second item, um, which is on the consent agenda, but just on behalf of the superintendent and uh, everyone at Ferndale Schools, I want to thank uh, Pam Belliver and her team at uh, the Ferndale Works Office uh, for all that they've done to help people in our community, youth and adults, uh, with uh, finding good jobs around the community. So thank you, Pam, and, and uh, the whole team there. And the final thing I wanted to mention is um, we, uh, we, as part of the Ferndale Inclusion Network, are hosting a meeting, at, which is at the uh, library, uh, called Think Before You Dial. It is, um, oops, it is at uh, 7 to 8.30 on September 11th. And it's a community conversation about how to reduce racial profiling and uh, the whole uh, living well black phenomenon of people calling uh, police around the country on uh, ordinary uh, things that African Americans might be doing, barbecuing or selling water or whatnot. <clears throat> so we hope that you'll come and uh, share, learn strategies that you may have, uh, hear about what's happening in Ferndale and, and our area as well. So that's. September 11th at 7 o'clock. Uh, we will end promptly at 8.30, and that's over there at the library. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Good to see you, Jim. Barry, could have made you a presentation. You don't have to come up. Uh, yes, I am. I'm sorry I wasn't on your formal agenda, but uh, thanks for having <laughs> right. me. Good to see you. <laughs> Good to see you too, Mayor and uh, Council members. Uh, just a few announcements. Uh, our Get Real uh, movie series is wrapping up. Uh, in September. Uh, on September 20th will be uh, Black Panther, and that starts at dusk. Uh, they've, the movies have been pretty well attended this year. We did a Napoleon Dynamite back in July, and we uh, just did The Lion King uh, earlier this month in August. Uh, so I think that's gone uh, pretty well this year. Um, and then also we have Fido Does Ferndale uh, coming up in October, but usually we stick with the third Thursday theme. Uh, because myself and our deputy director, uh, Cindy Wilcock, are both going to be out of the office uh, at a training that week. We had to push it back uh, to October 25th, so it did get moved back one week this year. Uh, we will be rejoined um, also uh, on that day by the Michigan Humane Society as well. Uh, so there will be activities that will uh, hopefully uh, generate some uh, donations. So if you're a, a pet fan, please come out and join us. Um, also, uh, coming up in September, uh, right after the, uh, the next uh, Get Real movie is on September 21st through 23rd is DIY and also the Funky Ferndale Art Fair that weekend. Um, so we will be uh, uh, also piloting the uh, chariot shuttles, the, the city, uh, that weekend. For those of you that have not heard, I think there's been a few social media posts about that now. Uh, I do want to thank, uh, I'm not going to go through the whole list of names with everyone involved. Uh, one of them is sitting right next to me, though, uh, <laughs> that has done a lot of work trying to get this thing put together and help us get it kicked off and moving. Um, and so we're, we're hoping that over the next coming months that will be a success and, and build in the community so people will uh, be more aware of those services as we go forward into uh, uh, some other plans happening around downtown. Uh, and then uh, just also another uh, note was that the DDA at their last board meeting in August kicked off the uh, Downtown Development and Capital Improvement Plan. Uh, as you may remember, earlier in the summer we issued an RFP looking for uh, consultants to assist us with that. Uh, we had five fantastic proposals come in, uh, really good, um, but there was a group of about 10 of us 
uh, who rated the different proposals, went through an interview process, and we did end up feeling that uh, Hamilton Anderson was the consultant of choice who will be assisting us with that. Uh, it's kind of nice because there's some continuity there. They're also the consultant that assisted with our master land use plan recently too. Um, so more will be coming up on that, and I'll hope to bring them back with me to a council meeting, and we'll uh, get community input and your guys' input as well into that process too. So thank you very much. Thank you, Barry. Any questions for Barry? Uh no, just that I, I appreciate you actually moving FIDO at work. That, that date is always awkward because there's at least two other events that night, and we end up bouncing between the three of them. So the fact that you moved it back a week, thank you. Yeah, well, if it, if it works better, <laughs> we'll keep it that way then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Thanks, Barry. Yep. Good evening. Um, I had something happen on Friday. Give us that, your name. Just oh, so Becky Hammond. Yep. Sorry, I live on West Drayton. Yep. Um, I didn't sign in, and I'm about to tell you why. Okay. I had something happen on Friday that surprised me and actually upset me, and that was I got an email from someone I didn't know, and when I opened it, it was a developer who I have shown up at several city meetings and spoken out in opposition to. And I emailed back and said, how did you get my contact information? And they said, this was part of the information provided to us by the city. And so I was surprised by this, that a sign-in sheet, apparently, with uh, my personal email address would be given uh, to a developer. Um, and also that, because dozens of us signed in in the two big planning commission meetings that our neighborhood showed out for, showed up for, um, two of us were, were singled out somehow. The developer knew to contact two of us. Um, there, there's something I'd like to read, and this is related. Right after the, the July 11th meeting, um, the Detroit Free Press wrote, in Ferndale residents this month won their own fight against plans to redevelop the old Drayton Avenue Presbyterian Church on Pinecrest Drive. Oakland County 115 reported, neighboring residents opposed the rezoning uh, with a list of reasons. Uh, most expressed the desire to keep it R1 residential. A majority of the comments went to, they don't want this to be rezoned to R3, said Planning Commissioner Joshua Farr in discussion. And then Dan Martin said, the master plan is there to add some predictability. Since the contact from the developer happened, we, we, had a, we had the feeling after this meeting, and because of these reports and because of our own sense of the, the impact of the so many people showing up, that we could relax a little bit about this. We knew it wasn't a done deal because the property isn't sold yet, and we knew that nothing official has been done by the city about rezoning. But now there's a feeling again, like it's all started up again, and it causes tension in the neighborhood. And the reason I'm bringing this up is, I feel like a lot of you have been public servants here for such a long time, and we all appreciate you but you became public servants before people with dollar signs got Ferndale in their sights. And so we do feel like our master plan and our zoning laws are supposed to give us a sense of predictability and security and that our neighborhood is gonna be the way it is, but that because a big piece of property came on the market, it's not like a house selling, and so people want it, and Ferndale's popular now. And I, my sense is that, as deal, when dealing with these developers, is that they feel like they're going to win. So for example, we reached out many weeks ago to the developer wanting to have a meeting with them. They want to have a meeting now, but then they just blew us off. We got back a, a cool, rather terse email saying, no, we're not going to do this. Um, there's, I know that there's a petition to designate the church a historic site, and, and I know that you can do that, it would probably be symbolic at this point, I would think. It couldn't have any legal standing because it would be sort of retroactive. It couldn't affect a sale or anything going on right now, I would think. But it seems like with big historic churches becoming a problem nationwide and congregations can't keep up with them, it would be a good idea to talk about it and come up with something, maybe creative ways to use these buildings because there are wonderful things being done with churches nationwide. And also so that neighbor, neighborhoods can relax a bit. As a, as a big parcel like that comes up for sale, um, we could feel a little more comfortable if we knew that the city could have things in mind. I know that what people want is for that to be turned into some kind of community arts, uh, wonderful things, Ferndale kind of things. And I know that this would be a hard thing to do. Um, what I'm hoping is that our neighborhood is not going to be rezoned. I know that people are very, very afraid the church is going to be torn down if we don't go along with these developers. I have a feeling that the developer thinks that too. Um, I know that's a lot of stuff and a lot of big ideas, but I think, I think this is there are two problems coming head to head here. One is that developers want large parcels. The other is that churches are going under. They can't keep up with these buildings that were built 100 years ago. 
Thank you. And, and I, oh, where'd she go? <laughs> April stepped out because I wanted to just ask, um, maybe I can ask Jordan, just a question about what we do with the, the, the names and, and information that's collected at these meetings. Is I don't know if we have a policy around that or... Um. Sure, that's a good question. Uh, those, those documents are public information. We, we don't obviously typically distribute those. Uh, at the last Planning Commission meeting on July 11th, however, there was a, a significant amount of folks in the, in the room that, that expressed a desire for engagement with the developers. So the developers that were at that project at that time, while no action was taken at the commission, ended up initially walking away from the property and then resurfaced. And they approached us and said, hey, number one, as part of the purchase agreement, the church was requiring that they engage the community, and that was something that the city encouraged as well. So they asked us for our help in facilitating. What we did do is we said, here is the resident group that we've been communicating with about updates on the project. We didn't tell them to sort of single anybody out. We told them, reach out to everyone and facilitate the meeting. Um, and we obviously could be there as a resource, but we were basically trying to facilitate that request for engagement. Because, I mean, that just... Uh, it's a valid question. It's a valid question, and it may be a lesson learned for us going forward, is that either we make people aware that if they sign it, it could be publicly available, or maybe there's a separate list that says, if you'd like your information shared, uh, or you'd like people to contact you, sign this one. But, you know, I mean, I, I would recommend that you develop maybe sort of a... Maybe policy is too strong of a word, but a practice that we use going forward so that people Through are aware. Through the chair, at least a disclaimer, because it's a yeah. public document no matter what. We couldn't it's say a, yes or no, it's foyable. I mean, it's a public okay. document. We, I'm looking, our, hang on one second. Your Honor, I did, talk, our, I did our, talk, our, talk to the planner, Justin Lyons, yeah. today and suggested a notice so that people would be aware that their yeah. information yeah. could be subject to, to requests from the public. And he, and he, I think he was working on it, and we're going to have that. I think that would be added. a reasonable thing to do, and I do apologize. I don't think that residents understood that that would be the case, and I do apologize that that wasn't communicated clearly. Yeah. As do we, and that change has been made to those sign-in sheets, so that's crystal clear now. Yeah. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, anyone else would like to address council this evening? Evening. Good evening. Uh, Sarah Elturk. I live at 308 East Marshall Street. Uh, I was unable to attend the last city council meeting where it probably went a little more to the agenda, um, but I'm here in regards to the Wilson Park Skate Park. Um, and I just want to voice my opinion and some neighbors' opinions that uh -huh. we would like it to be at Wilson Park. Okay. Um, I feel from watching the city council meeting online that a lot of people kind of came out and said, no, the whole neighborhood is in consensus that we don't want it, and that's not the case. Um, I would say especially a lot of the families that live in the neighborhood, we are definitely for something being put in the park. Um, I have four young kids. They are six, now five, three and a half, and almost two. Uh, my oldest. Thank two, you for that, yeah. for helping yeah. repopulate the and city. We, and we, we appreciate are that. Ferndale public schools, like hardcore, so we are all about Ferndale. Um, but I mean, my, my daughter, who's six, just this weekend, she's been outside skateboarding in the street. My son, who is now five, he's trying to learn how to skateboard. Um, but besides just being that we are a family that does skateboard and would definitely use that, we're a family that right now, even though there are four of us, we're two blocks away from Wilson Park, we don't frequent the park. And part of the reason why is because Wilson Park has kind of been, the city's doing wonderful things with all the parks. Um, so don't get me wrong that I don't see all of the great things the city's been doing. But Wilson has been one of the ones that is kind of last in terms of if you are a family with children, right. that type of thing for we it. We have the dog, dog park, park yeah. but the playground is run down. Um, it's basically a big park minus our wonderful, beautiful tree that we have that is all out in the sun. Um, there's not a lot else. Like the inline skate rink was taken out. The baseball diamond was taken out for the dog park. And what was a basketball court is run down, and there are no more hoops or nets there. Um, so it's not a place that the neighborhood gets together and you're able to meet your neighbors or be at. It's not really a neighbor park. It's a big green space, which I know that's what everybody likes to bring up is we don't want our green space to be gone. But it also needs to be a neighborhood park that brings the neighborhood together and is some place for you to meet. There are kids that live a street or two or three streets up from us that I didn't know even lived there until we went to the bus stop and we found out they were going to school with us. And I know there are other kids that we wouldn't even meet at the bus stop because they aren't even going to Ferndale. So having that neighborhood park is a great way to do that. I think the skate park is a great way to start 
um, with that and talking with Lorena. Um, we communicated back and forth several times about what's going on at the park. I know there is the Ferndale uh, survey that just came out in regards to it. Yep. Um, but it's just, it's getting it started. And I think part of why you're getting a lot of the neighborhood that is saying no is because they don't know and understand it well enough. Hearing a skate park and hearing 11,000 square feet sounds like a huge amount to a lot of people. And they think it's gonna take up a third of the park when it's really, right now, the plans are to have it be over the cemented areas that are the old inline skate rink and the dilapidated basketball court. So if they knew and understood a little bit better about what it is or where it's going to be, um, the space it would take up and the fact that Parks and Rec isn't looking at just putting a bunch of cement into a park, but it really designing an entire park with it, I think you find a lot more of the neighborhood that would be for it um, and would be for just the park, seeing those improvements or seeing the life come back to it again for it. So we plan on being there Wednesday and being at the next meeting here or whatever, discuss it. But wanted to say we're, there are pro Wilson Park Skate Park fans Thank out you. there. So Appreciate Thank you. it. Sarah, thanks for coming. Appreciate it. Hello. Good evening, evening Council. Uh, Gaurav Boyajan, uh, resident at 376 West Saratoga. Um, I'm here just to make a request, and um, I hate to do it because you guys just went over this June 11th. Um, that's when you guys made a bunch of uh, amendments to um, the zoning for residential pools, fences. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh -huh. So... Um, since then, so this meeting happened and unbeknownst to me, I went to um, a Board of Zoning Appeals meeting for, to get my own variance. Okay. And um, unfortunately, I didn't get it. And similarly, I guess the reason you had all those other changes is because no one um, for those met the stringent criteria to get a, a variance. So um, there were a few changes, and the change I was looking for was um, for the side setback. And there was a, a similar one that had um, gone through on the June 11th meeting, and that was you were allowed three, um, a side setback of up to three feet if you're building above. Mm -hmm. So if you can go vertical from where you already have your home, you're fine, but nothing horizontal. And, um, you know, I, it was a, I went over everything I could think of, and it seemed like basically uh, they said those are fine points, but they suggested I come to you to ask to revisit, to um, look over those um, changes you had made to see if that would be um, doable as well. Um, Mayor Pro Tem Pollica was there, and he was one of actually, um, there might have been a few others that thought that um, that was already part of the change. You could do three feet if you have an existing, existing home horizontal as well, but that was not the case. Um, and... Uh, I think uh, Justin Lyons was there, um, and he also said that, um, that you know that that could be looked at. Um, uh, like I said, all the other changes, especially the one to build uh, second f uh, floor, was because people were having difficulties making an addition, um, so they weren't doing it. Um, so uh, I think both him and Mayor Pro Tem Polka said they might discuss it with you uh, for future meetings. I don't know if they did. I don't know if that came up at all. Uh, not with me, and so I'm, I'm, I don't want to put Jordan on the spot. Is this an issue you're aware of, or at least something we could look into and, and you could get back to us yes, on? It's, it's something that Justin and I discussed uh, sort of on, as a sidebar. I know he's working on it. I'll follow him okay. first thing tomorrow, and we'll reach out to him. Sure. Jordan is Justin's boss. He's the uh, okay. director of economic development. Okay. Uh, right. And so, um, yeah, why don't you do that, and then maybe you guys could connect and... Uh, because right, I wasn't aware of the issue, but I appreciate you bringing it to our <clears throat> attention, and we'll we'll look into it. All right, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else like to address council this evening? All right, seeing none, we'll move on uh, to the consent agenda, and the consent agenda is items that council considers routine, and we enact in one motion, unless council pulls something from the consent agenda. Uh, so let me read that for you now. Uh, item A is the approval of the regular meeting minutes of July 23rd, 2018. Item B is a proclamation of National Rail Safety Week. <clears throat> item C is the proclamation of an appreciation to Michigan Works. Item D is the approval of the resolution of support for the 2018 8 Mile Boulevard Association Unifying Framework. 
Item E is the approval of the request for $5,702 from the Community and Economic Development General Fund Special Consulting Fees to conduct the City of Ferndale Anaerobic Digestion Feasibility Analysis by Michigan State University's Anaerobic Digestion Research and Education Center. Who knew there was such a thing? <laughs> uh, just saying. <laughs> Item F is the approval of the purchase of a pavilion from Sinclair Recreation and purchase of construction materials in the amount up to $50,000 from the Capital Outlay Fund. Uh, item G is the approval of the submission of a Game Time 2018 Playground grant application and matching funds from the Park, outlay, ca park Capital Outlay Fund up to $50,000. Item H is the approval uh, of a request to promote uh, Officer Blanchard on 827-18 to allow time to train with Sergeant Simon, who is retiring in September. Uh, item I is the approval of a request to backfill two police officer positions. Item J is the approval of the 2018 High Intensity Drug Trafficking Area Subrecipient Agreement between the County of Oakland and the City of Ferndale. Item K is the approval to purchase the replacement trailer from Eastside RV in the amount of $6,875 and to charge that to the General mm -hmm. Fund Capital Outlay Account. Item L is the approval to purchase order is of a purchase order for a leaf picker fabrication from Rhodes Inc. in the amount of $15,000 and charged to the general fund repair and maintenance account. Item M is the approval of a purchase of mobile transmission units on an as-needed basis in the amount of $15,000 and to charge the water and sewer fund repair and maintenance account for that. Uh, item N is the approval of an expenditure of $2,755 to the OASH Services LLC for aerial platform training certifications and that the expense be charged to the general fund training and education account. And finally, uh, item O is the approval of the bills and payroll as submitted by the city manager's office subject to the review by the city council, uh, the city council's finance committee. What is council's pleasure on the consent agenda this evening? Your Honor, I'd like to read the resolution related to item C. Absolutely. Um, After there's a motion and, oh, and, sorry. and support. Well, yep. I move that we accept the consent agenda as presented. Support. Okay. I'd like to make a comment too about Moved by Leakes May and supported by Martin. Okay, so Councilman Martin, you want to? Um, sure. Uh, recently, the Michigan Works Office in Ferndale uh, was closed and the operations moved to other. Uh, other offices. Um, this is a facility that's done amazing work um, yeah, with a population to assist them in their employment uh, situation and so we wanted to take a minute and recognize uh, Pam and the staff. So I'm going to read this and then we'll bring Pam Belliver, the uh, executive director of the office up uh, to recognize her. At a regular meeting in the City Council of the City of Ferndale, Oakland County, Michigan, uh, held at 300 East Nine Mile Road, Ferndale, Michigan. Mayor Coulter, on behalf of the Ferndale City Council, extends the city's appreciation to Ferndale, Michigan Works for its staff service to our community. Ferndale, Michigan Works has been a credit to the community, and we encourage their longstanding commitment to serving career seekers and business customers from Oakland, Wayne, and Macomb counties, and uh, adopted, we suspect, unanimously tonight. Uh, so with that, Pam, why don't you come on up and the mayor and I will present this to you. Yay. <laughs> Joe's going to take our picture and make me look skinny. All right, other discussion on the consent agenda? Um, yes, I just wanted to uh, make a comment about um, the Eight Mile Boulevard Association's unifying framework, item D on the consent agenda. Mm -hmm. um, Eight Mile has always, uh, the city of Ferndale has always been a member of the Eight Mile Boulevard Association, and we appreciate um, them 
the, the board and the, the group uh, putting together a unifying framework, um, which is really looking at zones and nodes, um, but wanted to say that the city of Ferndale is really committed to looking at um, the entire frontage of 8 Mile, and it's indicated in our master plan. And so just wanted to say, while they're focused on that, we are also focused on the entire thing, um, but it's important to have a nonprofit group um, looking ahead and seeing how we can uh, better uh, beautify the entire corridor. Indeed. Thank you. Other comments on the consent agenda? All right, Barb, would you call the roll, please? Yes. Council Members Piana? Yes. Leeks May? Yes. Martin? Yes. Mayor Coulter? Yes, thank you. The consent agenda is adopted. Moving on now to the regular agenda. Item A is the consideration of the appointment of Carissa Green to the Ferndale Arts and Culture Commission. Uh, and you are our... I uh, am. Councilman Martin, you are our Thanks. liaison to that commission, so why don't you uh, introduce that? Thanks. I have the privilege of being um, uh, liaison to two of the commissions tonight that we're making a total of three appointments to. And the first one is I'd like to recommend we appoint Carissa Green to the Ferndale Arts and Culture Commission. Um, Carissa has a really, really uh, great background uh, at the Urban Land Institute, the Kresge uh, Foundation. Um, she's got a bachelor's in urban studies and has been to Oakland uh, Community College as well. Uh, Carissa has been a resident for eight years um, and moved over here really from West Michigan and, and is a big, a big fan for our, our community uh, and working with the Urban Land Institute. So I would like to uh, recommend uh, and I will make that motion um, that we confirm the appointment of Carissa Green to the Ferndale Arts and Culture Commission for a term ending December 31st, 2019. Is Carissa here? I didn't think. No. Okay. Is, is there support? <coughs> support. All right. So moved by Martin and supported by Leakes May. I would just mention that, as, I've always, as I always do, uh, it's a mayoral appointment with the, appro with the uh, support of council, yep. and uh, I certainly support this application as well, and Dan, I appreciate you bringing it forward. Sure. Thanks. Any discussion uh, on that appointment? All right. Barbara, would you call the roll? Council Member Leakes May? Yes. Martin? Yes. Uh, Piana? <clears throat> yes. And Mayor Coulter? Yes, thank you. Uh, that appointment is adopted. Moving on now to another appointment on the Ferndale Arts and Culture Commission, the consideration uh, of the appointment of Megan, is it Evoy? Uh, yeah, Evoy. that's how I've been pronouncing that's it. That's how I pronounce it as well, and so we'll go with that. Um, sure, I'd uh, like to, despite the fact she went to University of Michigan, I'd like to recommend her uh, for the Ferndale Arts and Culture Commission. She just has a fantastic... I oppose. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. She just has a fantastic background in music education. Um, she uh, uh, has been actually a principal at Our Lady of Sorrows in Farmington um, and at St. Joseph Lake Orion. Um, so a strong education background, very passionate about music, and considering the makeup of the commission today, I think that's a hole that we, we can fill with, with Megan's participation. And I'll ask, is Megan here? I didn't think so either. Okay. So with that, I would like to move that we confirm the appointment of Megan Evoy to the Ferndale Arts and Culture Commission for a term ending December 31st, 2019. Is there support? Support. Good boy, Martin, and supported by Piana. All right, any discussion on that appointment? All right, Barb, would you call the roll? Council Members Martin? Yes. Piana? Yes. Leeks May? Yes. And Mayor Coulter? Yes, thank you. That appointment is adopted. Um, regular agenda item C is the consideration of the appointment of, pa of Patrick Rock to the Planning Commission. Uh, and Patrick is with us this evening. And maybe, Patrick, I'll put you on the spot and ask you to come up and just introduce yourself and maybe just a little bit about your background and your interest in serving on the Planning Commission, if you don't mind, sir. Uh, so Patrick Rock, I live at uh, 631 West Drayton. Um, my wife and I moved to Ferndale in 2016. Um, we relocated from upstate New York, Syracuse, um, and we welcomed our, our first child, my daughter Maeve, uh, here in Ferndale in October. Um, I, I own and operate a property management and redevelopment business, and we um, predominantly do uh, affordable multifamily housing, um, and we're really well regarded uh, in the state in New York. Um, I am a trained civil engineer, uh, I also have a, a de uh, degree in uh, business and entrepreneurship and real estate. 
Um, I also have a, a passion, I guess, for sustainability. Um, and in our own practice, we've uh, tried to incorporate green and sustainable practices as we've redeveloped our own properties. So um, I'm excited about this appointment. I'm happy for your consideration. Um, I hope I can continue to execute the master plan um, and maybe give uh, my perspective about affordable housing, sustainability along the way. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, while Patrick is there, any questions of Patrick? I know we don't have a... I hope question. you like meetings that go till midnight, because that's what we do at the planning well, I, I, I travel frequently. <laughs> in a lot I, of I, listen, I listen to these meetings uh, in my car. Me too. And it, I mean, I, I, yeah. it, it's about a six hours drive. to your meetings on the way to New York, yeah. driving to New York. And you're the, the right guy for the job. You're the right guy for the job, unquestionably. <laughs> for the job. Unquestionably. Yeah. So. Um, um, do you want yeah. me to go? Um, I move to confirm the appointment of Patrick Rock to the Planning Commission for the term ending December 31st, uh, 2020. Support. All right. Moved by Piana and supported by Martin. Now, any discussion, uh, comments, questions? No, just thank you. Uh, I'm looking forward yeah. to working with you on the Planning Commission and uh, your willingness to serve. So. Okay. Um, and just a comment, we haven't had someone with strong real estate background on our Planning Commission for a while. Um, we used to have someone years ago, and unfortunately, they moved away. Um, and so I think having the civil engineering will be a really great um, skill set on our planning commission. So I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. Go forth and plan. <laughs> <laughs> and plan. <laughs> yeah. And I, I really just appreciate your willingness to serve. Um, you know, every, every community does planning commissions <coughs> a little differently. Some of them... Uh, are operated with a lot of influence from the city, but I think you will find that we hire really good, smart people to work on there, and we give you uh, the latitude to make good decisions. I hope that's always the case uh, here with you. I, um, we, you're also well supported by a great staff, so lean on them because they're really good, uh, and we appreciate your willingness to take on a, a, a big job. I don't think the mo majority of public understand what it's entailed in serving on the Planning Commission, but we do and we appreciate it. Yeah. With, um, with the city talking extensively about affordable housing, I think your perspective will be very much appreciated and I'm excited to, to see what you bring to the table. Thank you. Thank you. All right, if there's no other comments, uh, Barb, would you call the roll please? Council members Piana. Yes. Leeks May. Yes. Martin. Yes. Mayor Coulter. Yes. Thank you. That appointment is confirmed. Thank you, sir. Uh, our final regular agenda item this evening is the consideration of the backfilling of the chief of police and for the city manager to engage in an internal hiring process accepting the current appointment of the chief of police position from Council's 20. Uh, December 15th, 2014 recruitment policy as submitted by the city manager. And city manager, I will let you introduce awesome. that item. Thank you. Um, as you know, our chief of police retired back in April. Um, interim chief uh, Vinny Palazzolo has been taking, has taken over um, that role for the last five months. This is a, an, a new, unusual request in the fact that you typically you would see on a consent agenda you know, the ability to, to be able to um, fill positions that are left through retirement or n normal attrition. However, this one's a little unique in the fact that uh, in many cases, a chief of police is just as important, if not more important, than hiring a city manager, and I didn't want to bury that um, in a consent agenda. So a couple of things we wanted to, as we were navigating Tim's retirement, we wanted to give uh, interim chief Palazzolo some time to get acclimated, um, work with us as our leadership team, as well as the police assessment study before we made any final decisions on how we were going to move forward with um, filling that position. I think in working with uh, the interim chief as well as working with the city council and uh, building uh, that relationship with him, I feel at this point that um, it is in the best interest for our department and our organization to continue forward with um, uh, of hiring uh, the interim chief in this role. Um, it is um, important to note, too, that uh, back in 2014, council had put in a resolution that any leadership position, all department heads had to be an internal and external review, which I appreciate that resolution and I don't want that uh, to go away, except for in this instance. I think it makes the most sense due to the nature of how you recruit for a police chief that we, um, if we are very interested in, in Chief Palazzolo, that we continue on that vein. And if that is uh, uh, where we're going to go and you allow me to just do an internal process, then I would like to spend the next um, two weeks working with the interim chief to come up with some ter uh, agreement, uh, terms of agreement for um, his employment here. So that's why it's in front of you and it's kind of an awkward um, 
mm -hmm. resolution and it, you know, it's important to note that in 2010, this is the first time you guys have hired a chief that doesn't report to city council. Right. So I wanted to kind of separate that issue as well. So it's definitely my appointment, but I did take into consideration council's thoughts in the process of how we were going to navigate this, this hiring. So with that, that's where I'm at. So I am requesting that you allow me to do an internal process only and um, that I will be able to work with interim chief uh, Palazzolo to come up with terms of his employment agreement. Through the chair, if I may, um, I don't think it's awkward at all. I think that based on the, how the assessment came no. back and what we've seen from uh, the interim chief, I'm, I'm thrilled with this decision. I just meant that it was a weird No, I understand, but okay. I just want to point out <laughs> yeah. that it's, I'm glad we're able to do yeah, this and make you. this exception, and I wish you well in your negotiations. You better take it. Uh, <laughs> um, but no, I appreciate you bringing this forward. So. Thank you. Other comments? Questions? I'm in um, support of uh, Councilman Martin's comments. I think mm -hmm. we were waiting to see what the results of the report are, or, or the, the assessment. Um, and really great positive feedback on it, but also areas of that we need to work on um, with the police chief um, and the city manager. Um, as a follow-up question to that, because I do support, you know, um, the, this internal process, but can you, um, the question I have is, can you um, tell us when we're going to be able to talk about the assessment, when it will be presented to the public? Um, I think we're going to give uh, opportunity for um, interim chief, hopefully <laughs> permanent chief, an opportunity for his team to come back with some action items as it relates to the to the actual assessment, but it's public, it's right on our website. I can get it, make sure that it's more accessible. Right now it's under a um, workshop session from August 13th, and I'd be happy to have that rearranged so it's on the on our website so people can have access to it. We had a work session, we didn't have. Right. Right, yeah, okay. Yeah, I would follow up on that. I, I mean, I think part of the original intent was to, to make sure that the public was sure. sort of aware of those findings and, and what the report said, so. Um, I don't think we could over communicate it really. No, and I think we were um, going to take a look at dueling the um, ensuring or making sure that we were going to move forward with Vinny and then com combine both things so that we can have all of that as one package so people can see that. So there'll be some communications with that in the next two weeks. And having said that, because now we're, you know, yeah. being very vague to the public, which I don't think has seen the assessment, but we did an internal mm -hmm. assessment of our yeah. police department just, you know, after some of the incidents that have happened over the last few years. And, and, and uh, you will see it, and you'll get a chance to digest it. And it's, it's very uh, thorough. Uh, we we want to be very transparent about it. Uh, but I'm going to say that my, my very brief summary of it is mm -hmm. that it reinforced that we have an excellent police department. Mm -hmm. um, but like any department, there's areas that could be improved. And so there's very specific strategies and actions that we can do to just make sure that we maintain an awesome police department here. Uh, and uh, um, I really appreciate that on, on, on some of the issues that have been identified, um, uh, Chief, you've already taken the initiative to start leading on those even before we did the assessment and, and you've embraced the rest that's in there, um, and so I feel very confident that we've got the right uh, guy in that position, and as April, as you said, this isn't our hire. It's very important for the public to know now that this is a position that's hired by the city manager, but we need to suspend the rules, which is why this is here, the rule about the external review. Um, uh, but I'm excited, uh, Chief, that you'll be joining us in that capacity and look forward to working with you. Your Honor, may I add a clarifying statement to what you just said? Yes, please. I would like to emphasize, because I think it's important, that the assessment was done by an independent entity. We, it's an internal assessment, but we didn't do it ourselves. Uh, experienced former law enforcement officers from out of state came in and did a very thorough deep dive into the department. So it was completely untainted by our local perspective. And uh, to add on top of that, um, significant input by local business owners and residents. Mm -hmm. um, who, uh, and police officers. And police and, officers. And, yeah. yeah. So. So. Good. So we need a motion. I will move uh, to approve the backfilling of the chief of police and for the city manager to engage in internal hiring process, accepting the current appointment of the chief of police position from council's 12-15-14 recruitment policy. Support. 
Like, can we all support? <laughs> um, yeah. Moved by Martin and supported by Leaks May. Any other comments, questions, concerns? All right, Barb, would you call the roll, please? Councilmember Leeks May? Yes. Martin? Yes. Piana? Yes. Mayor Coulter? Yes. Thank you. That item is adopted. Um, excellent. So we move on now to call the council. So let's start with uh, Chief Palazzolo, if you have anything for the good of the community that you would like to share. And as you're coming up, I do have a question for you, which occurred to me while you were doing the Life Saving Awards. Do you know off the top of your head, and if you don't, you can just get uh, the information, how many um, uh, overdose victims we've been able to save with Narcan this Since year? Since the inception of the program mid-April of 2016, it's between 50 and 60. Okay. I'll get you an exact number. Yeah. Be, um, can we flesh out of that number the number of repeat visitors of that? There are no, those are there are the fifty to in sixty there. independents. Yeah. But I am interested without obviously names that if there are any that we've done duplicate services for and how I many. can get you a number of how many repeat customers. That's perfect. That's are. exactly what I want. Yeah. Yep. Thank okay. you. Um, you know, you'd heard about a little bit earlier we did the uh, Jacobs kit training today with the school district. Um, I feel like the fire department's not getting any love in this because they pretty much uh, conducted a majority of this training. Chief Sullivan, along with four of his staff members, were the driving force behind the syllabus. Behind this, uh, they were at the critical stations. Um, so without them, we would not have been able to do this. I would also like to thank Lieutenant Joe Broder, uh, the MSP North Metro uh, commander. He sent three of his folks, three of his troopers that helped out. Uh, because they have a vested interest with TCEC in the uh, in the township and also director Cooper from Oak Park he sent two officers to help with the training so it really was a collaboration between three different police departments in the fire department uh, and without all of their help we would not have been able to do it but we ended up training over 200 and some uh, staff members today and some of them were you know said that they shouldn't have to do this uh, and then a lot of the other ones were really thankful that you know and appreciative that hey thank you for you know, exposing us to this and giving us this valuable resource. So that's all Ex I have. Excellent. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Chief. So since you mentioned you, Chief Sullivan, anything for the good of the community that you want to share? I'll pick you out. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, kudos to the leadership of Chief Palazzola for uh, putting this through. Um, there was quite a few emotional responses from school staff, and um, I think some of them were taken back a step when you're talking about fixing children with bullet holes or stab wounds. It's not something we think we should do, but with uh, the police department buying the Jacobs kit, it actually created quite a bit of comfort with a lot of people that they were scared. And I said, the police department and the fire department will be coming right in if anything should ever happen. But some of these people are savable, but we're not there in the first three to four minutes. So you have to do these things. And when they understood they're just going to take action until help arrives, it really made them feel a lot better. And I think it was a very positive thing and a, an excellent show of uh, collaboration between uh, the other police agencies and fire as well. So I think our school community, at least the people that all work there, feel very secure in what we're working forward uh, to accomplish. So I think that was a big kudo to Benny. Awesome. Um, Agreed. We're uh, struggling through hiring process. Uh, as I told you before, the pool seems to be very small and it's very shallow, but I just got through five candidates that talking to Dan, I think we'll be able to bring to council to bring on board. Excellent. So uh, we're looking at some good people and we're looking more for attitude than we are what their training and background is because we're looking to the future fire department of Ferndale and not what, where we're currently at, but where we're gonna go. So that's working out well. It is quite tedious and a royal pain in my rear, but <laughs> I'll keep it clean for council. But uh, it's definitely a lot of work, but I think it's worth it because the results are we're getting some really good people. Yeah. Glad to hear that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Lorena, anything from Parks and Recreation this evening? Good evening, just a few updates. I um, just wanted to give you some, some numbers with regards to our youth sports, our soccer, and our adult softball. Um, we are currently, for our fall soccer, almost doubled the numbers in every category. For instance, um, in our U4, we had 14 teams. 
in 2017, and currently we have 35, and there's a wait list. Um, and the list sort of goes on. So right now we're pretty much sold out of um, all of our teams, um, which is a great thing. Um, in addition, we also added a, a U12 girls team this year, which we didn't have before. It was just co-ed, but now we have um, a large group who are all girls, so we have another team as well. Our softball teams, um, we're currently wrapping up registration for that. And a few numbers for you. Um, in 2017, we had 21 teams. And currently, this fall, we have 30 teams. And we also added an additional day. Um, so in general, just some announcements. We held our first mom-to-mom -mom sale this past Saturday. And it went great. Um, it was mainly a fundraiser to help improve our kids' corner. And we had over 35 vendor tables. Um, and it was I was there as well, and it was a really good event. So I plan to do it again in the future, and I want to thank my staff for putting that together. It was all of them. Um, in addition, we have the date for Fall Festival, which will be October 16th. I mean, I'm sorry, October 6th. So please uh, mark your calendars. And we plan to have um, um, some of the great things that we had last year plus more. We are currently um, revamping our craft fair. We didn't have it last year, and we're redoing it now. Um, it'll actually be the day after Breakfast with Santa, which is, I believe, Sunday the 2nd of December. Um, we're looking for any vendors that are interested. We have been getting a lot of feedback and people contacting us, so at this time we are accepting vendors for that event. And I wanted to, uh, just as a reminder, that we have our skate park community planning meeting that's going to be held this Wednesday, August 29th at B Nectar, B Nectar at 7 p.m. In addition, we posted a skate park survey today, and you can find that on our Facebook page or on our website. You can also call the rec center if you have any questions or need assistance navigating the survey, and it's mainly just to um, options that the community consider important when discussing or trying to identify a location for a skate park. Thank you. And I guess I would just like to say while you're here, I appreciate your flexibility in doing that. I know we, you know, the, this conversation sort of, I don't want to say caught you off guard, but, it, you know, wasn't sure where we were going last time. But um, it's helpful just for us to think through the process, and I appreciate your flexibility and willingness to kind of rethink that with us. And, and it, whether it remains Wilson or something else, I appreciate um, your flexibility. Thank you. Uh, parking, anything? I see our parking guru back there, and he's getting up. There's a park, something for parking this evening. Love it. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. I'm not sure if Joe wants to add anything to this, but uh, <laughs> residents who are part of the uh, residential parking permit program yes. will be receiving letters, emails, uh, and friendly greetings from parking enforcement uh, who are in the neighborhood that it is time to renew your uh, residential parking permits. Uh, you can do so now uh, on the website, parkferndale.com, uh, get a permit. Uh, and log into the new system. Uh, it's very simple, uh, takes just a few minutes. Um, upload image of your uh, proof of registration and your uh, residence. Um, the uh, guest permits uh, will be distributed uh, to, uh, to anyone who does get their permits. Uh, just a reminder to anyone listening, uh, residents in the uh, residential parking areas are uh, entitled to up to two registered vehicles and two guest permits uh, per residence. Excellent. Yep. Good information. Thank you. Uh, Joe, we'll call the assistant city manager, but since the city manager just had to walk out, we'll call you the acting city manager for a bow. Tap it in. <laughs> yeah, I uh, just want to uh, build on the DDA director's uh, mention of Chariot. Um, and for the viewing public, I'll just provide this as the backdrop. Uh, the city held a couple introductory sessions with Chariot that came into town. 
uh, to introduce themselves to the business community and to the residential community. They held one event this weekend at Axel Brewing Company and one event this weekend at Rosie's. Both of those businesses will be featured as uh, on, the, on the routes uh, during the Chariot initial launch. Um, and so Chariot is a shuttle company that we are partnering with. They're a, a subsidiary of Ford Mobility Company. And we are going to be introducing them uh, as a test this weekend during Arts, Beats, and Eats. So Ferndale residents who would like to attend that event in Royal Oak can choose to not drive and pay for parking in Royal Oak. You could actually choose to hop on a chariot at one of the designated stops in the Ferndale community or the Pleasant Ridge community because we have partnered with Pleasant Ridge on this endeavor as well. The route map will be posted on www.parkferndale.com or you can sign up with Chariot on the website www.chariot.com. You can download the app and the route will be available there. Uh, in short order, we at the city will definitely uh, post a story and the route will be available tomorrow morning at parkferndale.com. That's yeah. cool. That's that is. Because there's nothing worse than trying to park at Artspeed. It's today. right. Terrible. We really need to <laughs> publicize that. When yeah. people know that that's available, yep. they will use it. We thought it was a great opportunity for testing. And so the service will run Saturday and Sunday this weekend between 4 p.m. and midnight, oh, yeah. connecting both Ferndale and Pleasant Ridge communities to the event taking you back and forth. Head times should be between 15 and 30 minutes. We're aiming for 15 minutes, but it's our first go, go at it. Mm. Excellent. Thank you. Yep. Uh, let's see. Um, Dan from DPW. DPW, Dan. Anything for the good of the community from DPW? Yeah, um, Got a couple of Dans. In, in uh, <laughs> recent weeks, and I'm sure you guys have probably had a couple calls, too, um, concerning the 2018 payment and improvement program. Um, some of the schedules have been a little off with the contractors saying no, no parking on the street, we're going to be doing work, contractors not on the street doing work. Um, has caused some inconveniences and stuff like that for the residents. Um, so we apologize for that. We are meeting with the contractor later this week to work through those issues, see what's going on, and make sure okay. we stay on schedule to get everything paved this year that we want to get paid. Right. Thank so. you. So we got the other issue that I heard in addition to that one is just the the level of vibrations that a couple of residents heard that to them felt like an earthquake or something. And I know that Carlos was going to look into that. Do you happen to know if there's ever been a so? I mean, I know lots of things not happen that, during a construction site uh, project, of, but um, nothing nothing unusual that you're aware of. Nothing really unusual. If they're going to be using um, one of their breakers and breaking concrete and that's going to make quite a bit of noise and there's no yeah. real way that we can get around doing that so yeah. okay short-term inconvenience long-term benefits indeed so. and if i made through the chair i get, um have addressed with um jordan this and he was going to get with carlos but for residents that are concerned because i've heard from a number of them um there's a real concern about noise in the start time there's no reason for our construction crews to start at 5 30 in the morning uh with that level of noise so um, for those concerned, we are looking into and we are looking at enforcing our ordinances around uh, construction start stop times. So I just want to put that out there for the public. What is the start time? 7, 7. 7 a.m. Yeah, and we try and keep them at that because they do utilize the southwest yard and the residents that border that. Yeah, um, I'm one block off of Marshall and I hear them, but I've, I've got residents calling me because it's their start. I want it done as much as anybody and as quick as possible, but that, that's just too early. Yeah, right. Fair Absolutely. Enough. Yeah. Thanks, Dan. Speaking of Dan, is anything from the HR department this evening? All right. How about from the finance department? Cheryl? No. All right. Uh, Jordan, anything from community and economic development this evening? First, just to the last item, uh, I did get in touch with Carlos over at DPW and working with him and our building official, Scott Worthington. We're going to be putting all the uh, contractors on notice uh, this week. Uh, pursuant to, obviously, city ordinance, but also our good neighbor policy, we're going to start uh, issuing fines when they start. So if you see a project that starts earlier than 7 a.m., let us know, and we will get on that. So we're going to go off of as we get. Who do they let know? You, the police, who do they you call? Can, you can go. There are three three well, gateways to this. You can be CED. But, yeah. You can go to DPW, or you can go to, um, so myself, the building official, or uh, the DPW department, and we okay. will get on that. Uh, the only other thing I wanted to show uh, is if you remember at last council meeting, I mentioned that the CED department was working on uh, improving the way that we communicate our uh, development projects. 
And we are uh, excited to report that the site can't be reached. <laughs> uh, so that's why you're excited to report that. Yeah, but exactly, we're done. We just don't want to communicate anymore. Uh, we, we thought it'd just be better that way. So it helps if you spell Ferndale correctly. But if you go to FerndaleMI.gov and you scroll to the main page and you go to Current Projects, you'll see Business and Development on the left. If you hit Current Projects, you will see that we have all of the the Major projects are updated. They all have their own page. Uh, above that, you have uh, what we call the new development map that gets updated once a month. So those that are familiar with GIS, or even if you're not, it's relatively easy to use. You can navigate and see different colors and symbols uh, that will tell you sort of what's being built, where it's at in the process, and what the deal is with each of those projects. And then on the main page there, uh, you could go to a project, and you can. there are different ways to engage. There are different descriptions over what phase it is in the project. Sometimes if we deal with complicated tools such as PUDs or brownfields or rezonings, we will unpack all of those different criteria, and you can see that right there. Uh, you can find all the documents in one place. Instead of having to fish for different meeting minutes, it's all right there. So you'll find that every time that there's a project that uh, triggers our enhanced notice policy, it will go there and you'll see all that stuff, and it'll get updated as milestones move, and you'll even see some road projects that, are, uh, that our department is involved in, and you could even see additional road projects. There's a quick link to the remaining road bond projects. So we're trying to make it easy to find all the stuff in one place, and obviously, of course, if you have questions on any of the items on any of those pages, you can reach out to the CED department, and we'll uh, walk you through it. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Uh, Barb, anything from the clerk's office this evening? Um, just kind of an apology. We cannot record tonight because our system keeps uh, interfering, I guess, with the internet. Oh. We can't stay online long enough. Right. So I'm sorry, but uh, yeah. they're working on it. And just a reminder the uh, November 6th general election coming up. So if you are not registered to vote, you need to get out there. And if you want absentee voting, just let us know. Yeah. We'll take care of that. And what else do we have? Is that it? I think that's it's the major election. Uh, no, we are. Um, <laughs> we do have a major FOIA that's coming up, and we did a 10-day extension until we get all the costs figured out. But we're looking. Marty kind of figured over 7,000. We might be looking closer to 12. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh -huh. Thank you. Okay, that's a big. Thing. Good. Thank you. Uh, Dan, anything? Uh, just one item. There was a uh, petition that was provided to the city relative to the proposed change of the resident-only parking zone designation for West Saratoga between Woodward and Allen. Uh, that draft ordinance has been provided. It's anticipated that either at the next council meeting or the second meeting in September that will be uh, prepared and for council's consideration. Good. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, Councilman Martin. Sure. Last week I had the opportunity to attend um, a really fantastic presentation put on by uh, Laura Mikulski and the Ferndale Rat Patrol and was hosted by the, um, the district library. And it was uh, standing room only, wasn't it? It was packed. There were so many people there. And Laura just did a great presentation with visuals and plenty of pictures of dead rats uh, and many ways <laughs> to kill them. Um, she, no, but she really has a passion and in depth intellectual knowledge of this and, and communicated that very well. So much so we went outside, found a nest, and got rid of it with dry ice. So um, she, she, I just wanted my hats off to, to her and the Rat Patrol. I am pleased to reiterate we, we've provided funding through the Community Foundation to the Rat Patrol this year uh, to help with these education projects and extermination projects, to be honest. Um, and uh, she uh, thanks to the library for hosting, and, and I just want to recognize Laura for a really, I mean, it was impressive, a terrific presentation. If she does it again, I'm sure she will, and you get the chance to see it. Um, it's well worth it. She has a, literally a glass paneled box that shows the cutaway underground of what that nest would look like and literally can demonstrate so you can see in it what the dry ice does, for example, which is a preferred method of, of getting rid of it. So check out Rat Patrol on Facebook and uh, you get a chance to attend one of educational sessions, anything they offer. That's it. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Well, uh, yeah, I, got the, I had the opportunity to uh, attend uh, 
a back to school event. It was really nice uh, through a, and was hosted by uh, Kim Stewart, who is a, a local uh, a parent in the community, and we actually are schoolmates. We went to school together. Oh. And um, so what she did is that uh, she hosted a back to school event where there was backpacks and school supplies given away, lots of kids in the neighborhood. They had bounce houses. Um, and what I really loved is that there were people there actually like braiding kids' hairs and giving them nail polish, manicures, and uh, they were, the boys were getting haircuts. It was just a really nice event, a way to kick off, uh, send the kids off to school in style. And I just want to thank everyone who donated to make that event possible. Mayor, I know you donated to make that possible. I've donated and others in the community. So, uh, and if you didn't know, Kim uh, Stewart is a recipient of the Good Neighbor Award for doing this very same thing, uh, giving back to the kids in the community. So kudos to her. And I believe she has a coat drive coming up, uh, coming for the winter. So I'll be putting the word up regarding that as well. Cool. Thank you. Uh, Councilwoman Piana. Um, yeah, I just wanted to let people know that um, I have been uh, listening to the residents in Northwest Ferndale about the Drayton Church. Um, it's in my neighborhood and um, hearing lots of different comments and just encourage people to reach out to me and let me know what you think because I'm hearing um, positive um, for and, um, you know, people expressing concerns as well. Um, and so we'll be paying attention and being involved as we go forward with this project, which really is a significant change in the neighborhood, um, one that people weren't anticipating, obviously. Um, it's not very often that churches go up for sale. Um, and this is a private property sale and um, something that the city, and I know city council and staff are taking it very seriously and making sure that the developer follows um, our processes. And sometimes we, we also change them too to make sure that the needs of the residents are being met. And I think being heard and uh, through this process is important. And so I just wanted to say that I'm um, on top of that as, long as, as well as Dan and everybody else um, on city council. And I just want to say, you know, it's the end of the summer. Have a happy Labor Day weekend. Thank you. Go to Arts, Beats, and Eats. In the chariot. chariot. Yeah. chariot. Yes. Uh, and I don't have anything uh, to share this evening. And so with that, our meeting is adjourned.